Welcome to Bugs Masters of Disguise. I'm Jungle Jen. And I'm Adventure Allison. And before we get started, we would like to gratefully acknowledge that we are on the traditional, unceded territory of the Seal people. And today, we are on a bit of a bug safari. We're going to be searching for bugs. And I think it's going to be pretty easy because bugs are everywhere, right, Adventure Allison? I don't know, Jungle Jen. Bugs are everywhere. But they can also be pretty hard to see because they are masters of disguise. You mean the bugs are wearing disguises like fake mustaches just like us? No, not quite. They don't wear mustaches, but they do have a bunch of different ways of camouflaging and hiding. And we get to learn what those are. All right, let's go. So our very first insect is full of saps. We have the ladybug and she uses her bright red color to warn other predators, hey, don't eat me, because if you do, I might make you feel pretty sick. So in the animal kingdom, insects and animals, they use bright colors and patterns as a way to warn other predators, hey, back off, I've got some poison, you don't wanna come close to me. So what's that poison like? So if a ladybug gets scared, they secrete this sticky, stinky, yellow liquid out of their legs. Is it dangerous to us? Nope, just to the small animals that eat them. If a ladybug comes and lands on you, we don't need to be worried about them. They're our friends, they've come to say hi. I wonder if poison is the only trick up their wing. It's not, so ladybugs can also camouflage because not all ladybugs are bright red. So they can also be yellow or brown or even orange. And since those ladybugs aren't as colorful, they're not as poisonous. But since they're colors that are a little bit more like the ones we find in nature, they can camouflage, they can blend in and hide with their surroundings. And I've got one to show you right here. So we can see that this little ladybug is kind of an orangey brown. So it could easily blend in with some bark or leaves. Genius, what a clever lady. I know. Hey, Adventure Allison, look what I found. This is a buprested beetle. It has tiny microscopic ridges that light bounces off of, of and makes it look metallic. It's kind of like the way light bounces off a DVD and forms a rainbow. So how can you camouflage if you're bright and colorful? Well, some scientists think that it's mimicking raindrops on leaves. That's so cool. I never would have thought of that. It's a very cool beetle. Now, speaking of beetles, look at how big that one is over there. Oh, Jungle Jen, you found the 10 striped June beetle. Now, those beetles, they like to live in grasses and conifer trees. Those are the ones with the needles. And because they have all of those stripes down their back, it's really easy to blend in with things like grass and needles on trees. Now, those needles are also really tasty snacks for them. So that's really convenient. Now, this beetle can camouflage and hide if it wants to, but it also has no problem letting you know if you've come a little too close. They can force air out of their wings in a way that makes them sound like they're hissing. Beetles that can hiss? Oh, wow, crazy. Hey, Jungle Jen, look at the eyes on this bee. Adventure Allison, that's not a bee, that's a fly. A fly, but it has black and yellow stripes. That's right, it's pretending to be a bee or a wasp because it's pretending to have a stinger. Now, if you were a hungry bird, are you gonna try to eat the insect with a stinger or without a stinger? Without a stinger, I don't want my mouth getting poked. Exactly, so it wants you to think that it has a stinger. Whoa. So that fly is pretending to be a wasp or a bee with a pointy stinger. What a clever little insect. Speaking of insects that fly, I found some really cool butterflies just over here. 
Hey, look what I found. It's a big, bright blue butterfly. Try saying that three times fast. You found the blue morpho butterfly. They don't live here in the Okanagan. They live down in South America. How can something so bright and blue be camouflaged? Well, if you look on the other side, it's full of grays and browns. So those colors help them to camouflage. But all of those little circles also look like eyes and they use them to trick and confuse their predators into thinking for something else, usually something bigger than they are. Well, I understand that adventure, Allison, but surely when it flies, it has to flap its wings. So how would that hide from predators? Really good thing to wonder. So with those butterflies, when they flap their wings, It'll go from flashing the bright blue to suddenly disappearing with the dull brown, and then it flashes and reappears. And by appearing and then disappearing and reappearing again, it makes them really hard to track and see. That's very clever. It is. Now, look what else I found. Wow, it's an emerald blue swallowtail, and it looks different from every angle under all different lights. So right now, we're seeing a lot of greens and blacks, but sometimes it looks yellow or teal or different color blues, and the underside is brown and gray. That butterfly sounds like a chameleon. It would be hard to see. It's very confusing. And speaking of confusing, look at the, the eye shapes on the wings of that one. You found the owl butterfly. So they use those little circles to look like eyes of an owl so that they can confuse their predators into thinking that they're something bigger than they are. Well, now we've seen a few butterflies that are amazing masters of disguise from around the world. Let's come back to the Okanagan and see what's camouflaged in our grasslands and wetlands. I found a dragonfly. Now I know how this one camouflages. It has see-through wings. That's right, Adventure Allison. That's one way that it camouflages, but it also does something else. It has something called motion camouflage. Motion camouflage. Don't you need to be standing still to either hide from a predator or be able to sneak up on your prey? That's what you would think, but not with this clever dragonfly. You see, its wings beat so flat fast that you can't even see them moving and its body stays still. So as it darts and hovers and darts and hovers, it's actually getting closer, but its prey doesn't even know it's moving. Whoa, that's really cool. I want to go look for dragonflies now. It's such a fun thing to do. <laughs> now I found a true master of disguise, the mantis. So they're right over here. And if you put one of those in some leaves or grass, poof, they look like they completely disappear. If you look at the color and shape of their body, they would blend in perfectly with the grasslands. Now I know another Okanagan insect that likes the grasslands, the giant lacewing. Ooh. Hang on, it's not there. I remember it had to go to the freezer. That's right. You see, sometimes in the museum, our bugs get bugs. If tiny little microscopic bugs get into the museum, they're looking for things to eat. Protein like animal skin or other bugs. We check our collection every day very closely to make sure that nothing gets in. And if we notice anything, like little exoskeletons that are stuck to some of this special contact paper we use, we will very carefully wrap up the specimen and put it in the freezer to kill any eggs or larvae. So that leads us into Kelowna Museum's word of the day. Today's word of the day is frass the excrement of insect larva. That's insect poop. Gross. <laughs> now, even though we don't have the giant lace wing here to show you, we do have a picture of it. 
so we can get a really good look at how this insect camouflages. So there's see-through wings and there's a lot of brown and gray on it. So with all of those colors, that would absolutely help it to blend in with the grasslands. Well, now that we've learned so much about how bugs can be masters of disguise, let's practice some of our new skills with a game. So now we're going to play a game that I like to call, How is that insect camouflaged? So insects have a few different ways of camouflaging and being masters of disguise. So sometimes they can look like an object in nature. Sometimes they can look bigger than they are. And sometimes they can look poisonous. So I've got a bunch of different insects here and I'm going to see if Jungle Jen can guess how these insects are camouflaged. So we're gonna start off with our very first one. We have a wood nymph moth. Ooh, I know that one. That one, well, it could look like something poisonous or it could even look like an object in nature. What object in nature does this look like? That moth is camouflaging itself as bird poop. Oh, crazy. All right, let's see how well it camouflages. Whoa, perfect. Blends right in. Now our next one is the Katie did. This one lives in Costa Rica. Oh, that definitely looks like an object in nature. It blends right into its surroundings. Absolutely. We'll add that onto its picture. And it looks like it just disappears. Now our next one is the sand hopper. What do you think, Jungle Jen? Oh, I definitely know that one. It looks like an object in nature. It blends right into the sand. Sure does. All right, we can see that it looks like it completely disappears. All right, now our next one will be the stick bug. Oh, I know this one too. An object in nature. It says it right in its name. Absolutely. Now stick bugs, they like to live in places like Florida. That's pretty far away from here. But it will blend right in with the picture. So it looks like we have just a couple more sticks on that branch. Hmm, oh, this is a cool one. We have an emperor moth. Oh, I really like that one. It looks like it's bigger than it is. Look at those markings that look like huge eyes. It absolutely looks like a giant pair of eyes. So this next one is pretty cool. We have the man-faced stink bug. How do you think this one camouflages Jungle Jen? Well, it definitely looks bigger than it really is with that face on it. We could also say that it looks poisonous to eat because of that bright red color. Sure does. So it's got two ways of camouflaging. Now, how do you think the orchid mantis camouflages? Another one, it's right in the name. It looks like an object in nature. Absolutely, it's a very beautiful insect. We'll add that one on there. All right, we have four more left. And this one, we are going to do another Katie did. This is called the Leaf Katie did, and it's from Colombia. Definitely looks like an object in nature. Mm -hmm. I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> so we can see we've got some leaves right over here, and it blends right into them. All right, now this next one, it's not an insect, it's actually an arachnid. So that means it has eight legs. We have the lichen spider. <laughs> Another one that looks like an object in nature. Sure does. Now this one lives in Thailand, so I'm glad that it lives far away from here. Because you can see that on a tree, if there's lichen, it blends right in. Dang. Now our next one is a giant cockroach. Mm. Now that's cool. It looks poisonous to eat, even though it's not really poisonous. Absolutely. So this one is pretending 
to look like a kind of beetle that glows and that one's poisonous but this one's not but if you're a predator and you just look at it you don't always know that and this is what it looks like when it's not glowing kind of looks like an ewok to me it looks like it's straight out of star wars and our very last one is a little closer to home we have the canadian tiger swallow tail butterfly how does this one camouflage well, that beauty of a butterfly looks poisonous, even though it's not. Absolutely. So other types of swallowtail butterflies are poisonous, but this one's not. So it tricks its predators into thinking it won't make a very tasty snack, even though it would be completely harmless to eat. So now we have learned so much about how bugs can camouflage and mimic and hide in their surroundings. So next time that you go out searching for bugs, you know you're gonna have to look closely because bugs are masters of disguise.